Welcome back to Hour 3. We have Tim Alexander, a geopolitical analyst that often jumps in on programs each of the week. Uh, things are so power-packed all week, we didn't have a chance to get you on, Tim, but I'm sure you have lots to say about the Boston uh, Marathon Massacre, uh, the tentacles of, uh, of, of deceit, and, of course, the, the fingerprints that showed this was a false flag done by evil elements within the government. We have a, a situation where you've got some other intelligence and analysts analysis of what you see going on obviously they want to turn america into uh, like the city of netanya israel where if you go to the shopping center you got to go through uh, security just like going to an airport they want to turn every public venue into a place for body cavity search so you, while you're feeling the discomfort of recently being uh, violated you can then buy your beer pretzels and hot dogs so you can sit in the stadium and watch the super bowl or another event that's where this is all going and they want to expand homeland security they want to have terahertz scanners facial body scanners iris scanners fingerprints etc with the digital id for all americans was all, all of which is moving towards a high technology based global police state exactly now so anybody who says otherwise you're uh, either on another planet and just arrived here and don't know or you're a liar or you're an idiot and you can't be stupid if you have normal intelligence that I call it vicious ignorance where you literally lie to yourself in the face of facts and you want to attack the messenger because you think that we're gutless are going to back down from your stupidity or your vile attacks on those who have enough guts and honesty to face the truth and our servants of the most high God and love our fellow man our American Republic and people around the world and don't want to see tyranny reign and most of the human population of the planet extinguished because the global elite don't just want power and money they want death they want mega oh, absolutely, death because we're not talking about heavy metal off, rock group either they're disciples of Lucifer <laughs> right, and, so, and Satan always wants a blood orgy he wants the hate the killing the murder uh, remember Christ said he was a murderer from the beginning well and, he, he uh, can't get God but he wants to get his children let's put it that way yeah yeah uh, if you if you want to be an analyst, what uh, I would tell people is you need to look at uh, not just the trees up close, but the forest, and even go further back and, and uh, you know go off planet and look down at the forest and look at the patterns. Uh, now, when the Boston massacre happened, I uh, was in the process that morning of updating my blog, and I just. The first thing that came out, I, I happened to catch it, and I, I was—I put it at the top, and I was—I have to chew around on stuff for a few minutes sometimes and, and process it uh, because I'm just like anybody else. I, I tend to want to jump to conclusions, and, I, and you have to exercise some discipline there. Well, a good friend of mine called, and uh, she said, uh, you need to turn on Fox. And, uh, uh, you know, we just I said, yeah, I know about that. You, oh, you got to watch Fox. And, uh, and basically what, what she was saying, it was the Arab terrorists that did it. And I said, you don't know that. I said, look, uh, the majority of terrorism is done by state intelligence agencies. You know, is there, were they actually saying this, that they thought there were Arab terrorists that did it? And oh, yes. And, and what was their modus operandi? With three buddies. Well, well and, first off, why would you attack uh, a public the, venue? The bottom line is the Arabs did it. And right, no. uh, one uh, uh, of the three is, is Jewish, and he was really laying it on. And it finally got so bad we were we, we were laughing about each other because, I mean, it... it, it uh, well, you know, the, if you uh, look what, at what happens Fox, is if it, you look at CNN... Uh, the the bottom line is it's either the Arabs or it's the the right wingers in the United States that did something like that. Yeah. And the classic definition of a false flag operation is it's a psychological operation, it's a psychological warfare, psychop. Right. And uh, today, if you really kind of step back, so much of what is happening is it's it's scripted. It's like we're watching a fairly uh, not too well written movie uh, and uh, look I mean uh, here's one thing the mass media because you get so many stories coming at you so quickly you tend to lose track of where things happen were two months ago three months ago uh, right before Christmas right before Christmas we had this massacre assuming it really took place it probably did, but you know, there's so many questions about it. The Sandy Hook event. And I mean, I cried for two days over that. And I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm six foot two and a big, 
military guy, and I don't cry that easy. But just thinking of those kindergartners, uh, machine gun down and all, it just be beyond terrible. Okay. Uh, and then shortly after Easter, we have the Boston Marathon. Now, who doesn't know who, what the Boston Marathon is? I mean, everybody knows about the Boston Marathon. And and you have these scenes, people standing there, and, and the, these IUDs go off and take off people's legs and feet and children and just innocent people. And how could you not be upset? But who benefits Okay, the old uh, crew bono, who, the Latin, who benefits from all this? And uh, the, the, the common denominator is the globalists want to keep us on knife's edge as we, we move towards World War III and their new world order. Uh, and as they destroy the economy and they introduce more and more high-tech police state stuff. The Zionists, well, of course, uh, the whole uh, Bibi Netanyahu was always the one that, that created and has been pushing for years this concept of terrorism and uh, you know we're all in it together against these bad terrorists well we know for a fact that the Mossad is probably number one among the state intelligence agencies that does uh, uh, false flag events and if you think that's not true well think back on the USS Liberty and uh, how they they uh, uh, tried to sink our own ship, uh, an ally, and killed our own people. Uh, you know, you, you have to look at this from uh, from way back, and if you look at it, this is all part of a pattern. It's part of a pattern that I call the end time pattern, or the right. end of days pattern. And uh, we well, you are know that with more the and more into this. With the sequester on the cut, so... Uh, yeah, I want you to expand on this because with the sequester and the cuts that were announced against Napolitano and the Homeland Security, there's also been a change in the structure with all these different bills like the National Defense Authorization Act and the uh, the Procurement Act that they did to really do commandeer supplies of preppers if there's a state of national emergency. Uh, this attempt to, quote, set up a national gun registry isn't just the idea of we're going to expect to spend background checks at gun shows uh, and private sales. It was to attach extremely long prison sentences for someone acquiring your guns inadvertently, let's say breaking into your car. Uh, it was to set up a gun registry because you know the government's not flushing the data which they're supposed to. They're building gun registries. Oh, the government wouldn't lie. They're, they're, really, they're, they're, Dr. Eagle. Yeah, 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 listen, that, this is why the NRA supported the gun registry in the 90s and now doesn't because the government can't be trusted. I have a very simple solution. You need a list of people who are, quote, psychiatrically impaired, that it has to be current, can easily be reversed without legal operations and without big court times and all that thing with the county sheriff. And then simply they check with the list. And you make people responsible if they're going to sell a gun to make sure. We don't want a barrier so that people can't be armed to protect themselves, especially not only from a rogue government but from criminals. Yeah, there, are, there are people, and if you've had anything to do with the medical community or people at large, there are, it's just uh, maybe half a percent or one percent of the population is really nutty. And they probably yeah, but that's easy to deal with. It's personal responsibility. If Adam Lanza came into my office, I'll tell you what my procedure. I call my front desk nurse. Uh, uh, you know, and she'd say, I'd say, uh, call 911, have them be ready with a restraining jacket, zip ties, etc., <laughs> and a posy. Uh, this, this individual has arrived in my office, I'm doing a medical history. When you arrive, come in real gently and whatever. Uh, I'll be talking to him when you grab him from behind and zip time. Get him out in the ambulance and haul him off to a psychiatric facility. I've got the relative already ready to command, admit him for a three-day, up to 30-day uh, mandatory psychiatric evaluation. We need to put him in lockdown with no day passes. And you know what? That person would be within 5 to 15 minutes on their way to a lockdown room with a restraining jacket on, and there would be no more muss. No you know muss. when they did the photo of him with his eyes so wide, that was photoshopped? Mm, doesn't surprise me. It, what happens is the government amplifies everything, even if they have crazies, and nobody takes responsibility, not the school, not anybody else, and the idea is, the government's solution is, let's take away all the guns. That's not going to make things better. It amplifies the problem. The problem is us. Are we responsible for our fellow man? Let's summarize uh, some of the uh, the kind of the ongoing things of the day and the week. 
Uh, the first thing is we have the brewing war, which is now regional in the Middle East. There's air attacks between Syria and, uh, and the northern uh, town in Lebanon, which is primarily Sunni. We have uh, literally a regional war, which is teetering toward uh, eventually the closure of the Strait of Hormuz. The Iranian mullahs, by the way, apologized and, and gave condolences for the bombing. We know that there are no Muslim groups that they can tie to this. They've been making some kind of tweaks through some of their so-called functionaries that talked on CNN that maybe a patriot group decided to, to kill civilians, which is not the most at all. If there was a patriot group at all, they'd be attacking a government building or something that would be a symbol of tyranny by this government because it's not being done against citizens in America by any patriot group. No, 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 so no, we, no real American group. Right. Then we have the North Korean situation. Bomb is, women and I, children. That, then we, no way. Yeah, well, then we have North Korea where apparently Kim Jong-un has been disappeared for two weeks uh, in the midst of making ridiculous comments uh, and threatening the United States. Uh, I know people are trying to say that they can't strike America. That's hogwash. They can put a missile up in, in, in a package up into space into orbit, which means they can deorbit it anywhere on the planet. So That's they're exactly target, right. So the fact is that they do have miniaturized nukes, and they can go in the EMP. They don't, by the way, they don't have to deliver it that way. They can go and deliver it through their allies in China, uh, through the uh, uh, any of the ports in Mexico, bring it in a container, yeah, which is not being monitored by Nepal. I think it's cut out for China, though. Oh, sure it is. It's just their mad dog. Now, the fact is the Chinese tried to say, oh, no, they're not a mad dog, and they've got one hand with a steel chain around the dog's neck, North Korea. And North Korea doesn't fart sideways unless say, the general who's really babysitting Kim Jong-un has an aunt and uncle, and the general's there, unless they, they, they couldn't exist without China. So China basically is playing this Sensu game, and China basically is going to get, if anything starts, China will cease to exist. Well, keep in, fact, in mind, uh, you know, Japan just uh, uh, yeah signed a, a peace agreement, or not a peace agreement, a defense agreement with South Korea. Uh, China and, J- and Japan are still, uh, you know, always at loggerheads over some islands. The islands themselves are unoccupied mostly and worthless, but there is some mineral wealth and fishing wealth in that area. But, uh, you know, the... the we, uh, about a year ago, turned our attention, uh, our tilt, as they, the White House calls it, towards Asia and the Pacific. And uh, all this has to do with, uh, supposedly, all this has to do with the fact that we're very concerned about China uh, becoming not only an economic rival to the United States, but also a political military uh, rival to the United States. The reality is this is all a scam uh, from the global banking cartel. They created the modern China. They pumped the greatest uh, – they, they created the greatest mass transference of wealth in human history that flooded trillions of dollars into China and made it the, the manufacturing center for most of the junk we buy. You know, walk into Wally World, practically everything's from China. Sixty percent uh, of the manufacturing on Earth now. Sixty yeah. percent is and, China. But, but, but well, uh, the, it, they're also, the, by the way, they're destroying their environment too. To have a war, and right. if your goal is to have a war to reshape society, one more global war, so they can get their new world order. Well, you got to create enemies. Well, and here's the fact that China, that China and Russia world should be... War, and they did that in the Second World War, and they're doing it now as we yeah. march increasingly towards the Third World War. They're creating war theaters Tim, and allied groups and enemies so that we can go out and slaughter one another and make Lucifer very happy and yeah. them very Tim, happy because they think that they're going to Tim, come let me, let me out, of their caves, out of their bunkers someday yeah. down the road or maybe their great 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 grandchildren yeah. and they're going this to be to this, on top is, of this world and they're going to Tim, destroy this is important. in the process. This is important. Uh, you're, what you're highlighting is the fact we would be natural allies with Russia. Russia actually supported the American Revolution. Uh, China and the, should be and natural allies in the Civil War. Yeah, China should be a natural ally of us rather than an enemy. The rise of the communist China was because the British went in there and actually supported Mao Zedong against the, uh, the, the normal people and normal progression. Their uh, entire economy has been completely, in a sense, a vassal of the New World Order. In fact, uh, I think it was like five years ago where... Uh, 
the Chinese were ordered by the globalists to literally sell off a lot of their natural uh, manufacturing companies. In fact, the largest, besides uh, Caterpillar Tractor for heavy equipment, uh, it was bought up by uh, Carlyle Group, which is owned by the Queen, by the British, by the by the globalist uh, we call corporation bankers. The fact is, we we're the Chinese had to put walls up. They actually stopped uh, our ability to buy out their businesses a few years ago and actually set it up so we couldn't buy more than 50 percent because what was happening is trade. But the reverse money is not true. Right. What's happening, though, the Chinese want to have predatory access to technology and so on, so they're playing a multi-track. They want to do business with us. They want to make our Christmas toys and decorations, but then they want to invade. China really doesn't have a history of invasion. China may say that, and you have a few wacky generals that want to do that. What they want to do is buy Disneyland. They don't want to invade it. They want to, you know, so... It's the same thing with North Korea. I'm mad. I'm hungry. I want to bomb you. Okay. North Korea basically is uh, North Korea basically is like a bad baby that's screaming because they want their pablum. And what we need to do is, is we need to decapitate the regime. We need to tell the Chinese to stay out of the way because we're going to take their bad dog out in the back of the shed and we're going to de- we're going to put a bullet in his head. We need to stop playing around, and we haven't prosecuted a war correctly. And, and by the way, there are very few wars that are, there are wars that really should be prosecuted. North Korea needs to be taken out and given a terminal spanking. Um, and once that's done, the citizens can reunite Korea. And, the, of course, the Chinese are freaked out because South Korea is a very strong ally of the West. And South Korea is a, is a technological miracle state. It's had the fastest growing economy, the greatest revolution. There, there actually have been negotiations between the North and South for reunification. Yeah, but, they, but they're always being held back because the Chinese don't want it. They don't want well, to have the Chinese don't an American want ally right at their border. The, 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 the North Koreans have proposed that their great leader be the political head, but the South uh, Koreans would run the economy. Well, of course, the South Koreans have a fantastic economy. That's ridiculous. The they have a, a guy that thinks somewhere, he's a, oh, I'd say yeah. about uh, 1880 uh, something. Yeah, uh, but Tim, they have a they have a they have a story that that about the birth of these guys are literally like demigods coming from Mount Oh yeah, that's, well, that's ridiculous. The, the old like, tradition, the the uh, for 300 years, one family uh, were the reigning kings of uh, of Korea, and the king was more or less a god king. But you have to remember when you're you're dealing with the Korean people genetically. They're just about identical with the with the Japanese people. The, they were the right. same people, and the and the, the people that uh, moved into Japan were, were yeah. basically Korean. Yeah, r- racially they're called so the Japanese. They had their god emperor, and and the, right. and the Koreans had their god king. Right. And this North Korean hereditary uh, le- communist leadership is very much in line with this. Uh, I mean, they they. they he literally is a god with a small g to these people, and uh, it's pathetic. It's pathetic the way that they're starving, and and uh, the the. Uh, I mean, I I wouldn't last five minutes in that country. Right. Yeah. So, well, the summary basically is all this is smoke and mirrors as the economy crashes, as the bond market is about to blow. As Bitcoin is chomping over, exactly. yeah, yeah. As the Bitcoin is chomping at their, at their heels, and they're freaking out. Gold is down, down and blah blah blah. Yeah, sixty percent drop in the Bitcoin right before the gold in the stock market. Is so- We have Chris Harris, our nuclear expert, and by the way, that's his radio name. He really is an NRC consultant working with KEPCO in Korea, uh, has uh, seen very significantly over the last two years the incredible incompetence of, of TEPCO. Uh, Chris, tell us what you think of the radiation release that occurred after that earthquake. My detector went up by four to five times background level radiation for four to five days and has passed. But this is not just here in Southern California. It's all over the Northern Hemisphere. And the radiation levels basically are also detected in Australia and New Zealand, so there's no hemisphere you can escape to. Uh, we also have the basically no action by the NRC here in America. Give us a summary. Well, you know, there were, there were some uh, heavy jolts going on over there. Now, what you're seeing and what, what you're telling me you're seeing are possible spikes in radiation, and we're thinking, you know, where a could it be? Four or five days spike? It wasn't just yeah. one that was spiked, was spiked for an hour or so. We're talking <laughs> about four to five days consistently, four to five times background level. So we That's a hazmat that, site. Yeah. So we already know that there are leaking tanks that are not seismically qualified there. You know, 
I, you know, if you're asking me where it's coming from, I mean, they, look how look how long it took Tepco to it's a, to a multi-choice A-B. question with only one answer. Uh, you don't have A, B, C, and D or E. No. You only have A to select from. A is Fukushima Daiichi. San Onofre is mothballed. It came from Fukushima. Now, what's well, bad about this is that neither our government nor the usurper in chief in the White House, nor the IAEA, nor the Nuclear Regulatory Agency, the NRA over there, nor the NRC here, nor the Atomic, International Atomic Energy Agency in the United Nations, no one, as they say in the mafia, nobody knows nothing. Nobody's doing nothing. That, you know, just to use a little bit of Chicago slang. The fact is, what we're uh, doing right now is whistling while the world is getting radiotoxically bioaccumulating toxins that are going to lower the immunity of the herd, the immunity of not just humans, but every other animal, species, insect, etc. We're getting mutants emerging. We're turning the Pacific Ocean into the, the plutonium sea. Uh, and here in America, we have the Nuclear Regulatory Agency. Uh, after they had their previous uh, director, Jasco, was removed, they put a new director, and I hear no reports coming out saying any positive action to, to literally switch the newer technology that's going to be uh, safe, to take plants that are near fault lines and convert them to gas-generating plants, to use pebble bed reactors, the only safe ones designed by South Africa. Um, none of these things are happening. There's no moves toward preemptive uh, remediation to say we're going to put it in a seawall, corium catcher under all old-style reactors, uh, change the, uh, the hydrogen release systems, on these Mark uh, 1 reactors, etc., the change the tube design for the uh, tubes that they have at San Onofre with the Mitsubishi heavy systems that basically allows these tubes to vibrate and release radioisotopes when they get a hot shot down like September 8, uh, 2011. Uh, basically, I would give them not only a big fat zero, I'd say that you shouldn't come back in the building if they were doing a test. This is really crazy. And the fact that this is going on as a form of worldwide genocide is also is going to in a sense, kill the nuclear industry because anybody in their common sense realizes there is a thing called peak oxygen, and I'm the only one, the only one on earth talking about this in the public media, about peak oxygen. I was an environmental scientist before I went into medicine 40 years ago, and peak oxygen is very real. If we, let's say, if we industrialized all the third world countries, our oxygen concentration on the earth would drop dramatically. Uh, Human beings need oxygen, and your frontal lobe shut off, and you literally turn into a zombie. If you see somebody that's bleeding out from a gunshot wound, car accident, or a trauma of some kind and had an accident at home with a weed whacker and cut their foot off and they're bleeding to death, one of the first things that happens when they get hypoxic is they lose judgment. So um, if we want a world with zombies, literally, uh, if we want people toxically exposed to pollutants so now plagues have the perfect ground to spread, we continue doing nothing, which is what we have. So the NRC are doing nothing here. The NRA over in Japan, the IEA, uh, and, and what I see coming out of TEPCO is now the place is hit by another uh, earthquake, and they had another massive release. This time, this was the biggest release and the highest level that persisted longer in over two years. So something really, really bad is afoot, and nobody is making any notice. I contacted Senator Wyden in, in uh, Oregon, Senator Feinstein, who's worse than useless. Uh, I've tried to talk to their so-called nuclear expert at the Senator Feinstein's office, and he's a moron doesn't understand anything about nuclear toxicology, radio remediation, or safety procedures, nothing. So what we're dealing with is a bunch of numbskulls and uh, know-nothing, do-nothings that want to tell us that they have everything under control. All we have to do is just leave them control the levers of power and steer the machine down the open maw of a wide-open volcanic magma dome. This is how crazy things are, and I'm not going to put up with this crap. I am so angry. I've even tried to visit with Senator uh, Daryl Issa, and I keep on getting stonewalled by Shauna Walters over at the uh, Vista office. And I want to meet Issa because I want to tell him about the information I have is from the Academy of Environmental Medicine about not only San Onofre, but our remediation of our nuclear reactors here in America. And uh, the power shutdown that caused a hot shutdown problem there. I want to talk to them about the issue of Fukushima Daiichi and the fact that we now have dead seal pups from the sea lions on our coast. We have tuna that is so radioactive, and there's over a 1,000 sushi bars just in Southern California, a 1,000, all serving primarily Pacific tuna that's radioactive as hell, and nobody is doing anything. There's no oversight to say your fish counters are full of radioactive fish. Uh, you're getting radiotoxins in your water supplies, not only in the snowpack and in the, in the, in the uh, mountains. Uh, basically, when I ask, ask any questions, because I missed a question, we are getting nowhere. Nowhere. We're getting nowhere. You know, let me just say, you know, 
Tim brought up last week, and um, he said, you know, what is the what really is the uh, incentive for TEPCO to bring? I appreciate you bringing that up, Tim, because you know for TEPCO to step up to the plate and to actually effect uh, meaningful repairs and and uh, mitigation. And uh, you know, you and I discussed Dr. Bill a long time ago. I said, you know, I was always afraid that TEPCO would have been right after right after this happened, April 11th. I was afraid that TEPCO would just say, you know what, throw your hands up in the air. We're uh, well, we, I saw I saw reports actually that said that they actually yeah. considered in the first seventy two hours they were just going to walk away and say, Are "We going home to southern Japan? Have a nice day." Yeah. <laughs> so know, sorry. Make sure you go to yeah. temples, say prayers to ancestors, because you're going to soon visit them. Yeah. So what what Tim was saying was absolutely correct. In, in effect, that's even even though they they hadn't walked off the uh, effort for. Uh, containment of the uh, waste. I remember right now it's no longer a power plant. It's now a waste generation facility with no off switch, really. Well, what, what we so have is if you have right. two clues, which we can see the demonstration from these politicians and these so-called nuclear experts, uh, we're literally in a screaming disaster, and we have politicians like Daryl Issa, who supposedly is a good politician, but he won't meet with me. Uh, I'm really mad about this, and they're going to meet with Dr. me one Bill, way or the other. When I was a, a consultant to a, a very high-tech aerospace design bureau out in Long Beach, uh, a good friend of mine, old drinking buddy from college days, was a local congressman, was on the House Armed Services Committee. And I was trying to get a factory in, in my hometown of Evansville, and I uh, was told to lay us on with his defense expert. Now, this is a man who's on the Armed Services Committee. And um, I eventually went to Washington and met with her. It was a, a woman who was very interested in politics, uh, but she she didn't know which end of the gun the bullet came out of. I mean, literally. She had zero qualifications and zero understanding of defense technology, but she was a staffer, and he had to sign somebody, so she was the one that was assigned. This is a guy that sat on the House Armed Services Committee, and this was his expert, his in-house expert. And it's not surprising what you're telling me about the, their so-called expert doesn't know anything. Well, that well, the problem is, is how things see. operate in Congress. And unless you've been on the inside and seen it, it's just it's amazing. Well, well, let me explain about direct democracy. Direct democracy is what's happening right now when we have callers to call in. By the way, people need to know out there, if you want to call in and make a topically related question, any hour of any day, except the first hour on Friday when we have a list of questions to deal with, you can call. It has to be topically related to what we're talking about, and we do screen. We don't just let anybody speak or ask a question. And if it's obscene or an ad hominem attack, you're not getting on air. Uh, but the fact is, this is out of control. We are literally in a death spiral. As they say in the, uh, if you're flying a plane, which used to fly with my uncle, small planes, huh, uh, it's not the falling that, that hurts, it's the stopping. Yeah. The last and the stopping, <laughs> the stopping is about to happen. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report Clay and Iron Show. By the way, I'm going to start posting. I haven't been posting the daily uh, show updates on the Clay and Iron, but I'm going to start posting a lot of news items, a lot of special reports over there. And do visit our live stream channel. Tim is one of the great contributors and puts up reports on live stream. Uh, and our live stream premium channel is available free to all of our customers uh, of the last six months. And we appreciate all your support, not only for your own health, but prepping. We're adding new preppers all the time and working at things like our Turtle Tough Shelters. I'm working hard to get a major prepping organization, national organization for prepping teaching with former special forces that will be coming on the program as well. So we're always working on these things. People say, how do you do all this stuff? I said, well, I'm driven by love of the Most High God. I love my fellow citizens, my fellow Americans, and my fellow human beings, and every living thing on this planet right down to the most lowly insect and bug because that's our purpose is to be the stewards of Earth. And uh, as Jesus said in the book of Revelation through John, he said, I shall return to destroy those that destroy the earth. That's one of my favorite scriptures of the Bible because God's an environmentalist. 
He doesn't like seeing Fukushima Daiichi. He doesn't like seeing the Makondo. Of course, he's an environmentalist. He them. made everything. Right, and it's to be when he, I was uh, in my near-death experience when I was high above the earth. The very first thing he said when he brought me about 400 miles above the earth, and I, it's funny. Years later, when I saw the spacewalk and the men are out in their suits with a little umbilicus attached to the to the uh, the the, uh, the craft, uh, I looked down and I said. He said, "Behold my blue jewel, of the Earth." I looked down. I said, "It's like a sapphire." You could see the horizon shimmering in the in the on the edge as the sun was rising. And I said, "It's alive." He says, "Yes," almost like excited, like yes. In other words, the Earth itself is a living being. Uh, and we're not talking about Gaia and all this weird crap. We're talking about it's a living and nonlinear system, and we're destroying that. We're destroying literally the the, the very thing that sustains the fact that even our can. The it's reason we're and... destroying it is because of the influence of Lucifer. He exactly. is death, he is hate, he is evil, he is the opposite of God. Exactly. Now, what we, we're going to deal with here is a timeline. I expect the following. I'm not going to give you dates, but I'm going to say I expect, number one, the emergence of an airborne plague. It could be H7N9, it could be H7N3 out of Mexico, it could be the novel coronavirus, but that's next because that's the best way to bring in true martial law. Uh, this thing in Boston was just to tenderize the population to think that maybe we need TSA so it's safe to go to a public event like the Boston <laughs> Marathon or a shopping center or the you Super know, there, Bowl. There, there were uh, hundreds of military uh, <laughs> National Guardsmen there and cops everywhere, and it still happened. No, the reason why it still happened is probably 99% of the people weren't in the loop. 1% were, and there were the evil elements that were there that were going to manage the terror of this. Uh, just like they did with, uh, with 9-11, uh, as I mentioned before, I knew the commander of, of back in 1994-95 when I worked at CECOM, I knew the commander of Space Command, uh, Colonel Lynn Wills, that would manage the radar for all of the incoming nuclear missiles and the launch on command sequence of Huey, the supercomputer at the bottom of NORAD, so the fact is we have good people. In fact, he had his Bible that only tabbed to Psalm 911. And, in fact, that became my favorite scripture in the Bible ever since. He explained it to me while we were underground in Norad. So what people need to understand here is our God is God, and he's not nervous and he's on the throne. We need to start asking for the face to get through this crap. We need to start asking what to do next. And then what to do next isn't just geopolitical or lawsuits. We need to pray really hard. We need to start asking God to, to remove the overlords of death like Obama and these, uh, these ridiculous uh, senators and congressmen. For example, the immigration bill was basically an amnesty bill, not just for the 11 million so-called illegals, but all the relatives. The gun bill they wanted wasn't just a registry to make sure. It was a little more reasonable to make sure we could But you know what? Crazies. Something really it was to put ridiculous doctor bill. Enough what? senators didn't vote for it. Yeah, but the fact is, though, that they, they keep on making these attempts like they did from well, 1994 to 2004. But that's the nature of evil. It's right. Now, here's what happens. Door, is evil, evil prospers out. because good people do nothing. Well, we're not doing nothing anymore. We're the real media. We've got to stop pretending. You know, people say that you have a, a uh, what do they call it, a, uh, a grandiose uh, delusion. No, we don't. If we're servants of the Most High God, we have the signet ring of the, of the creator of the universe. If we are in his will, to say in Jesus, we have the authority to get rid of this evil. We have the authority to worship God and to create a stable world that can still allow human beings to live safely, and breathe the air, drink the water, eat the food, and, and have normal reproduction that's not going to cause mutated and degraded human lines and destroy species on the planet. We do not need to uh, accede to evil that will create an extinction-level event. And even if there are space, weather, comets, and asteroids, God will give us the knowledge and wisdom to how to deal with these things, to preserve our planet, protect our little blue jewel, the Earth, the little biosphere that is God's nest for the womb of 7 billion-plus souls now in, in a fetal site of a fetal literally position inside the uterus, about to be born and become sons and daughters of the Most High. If we stand and act in faith, and we have to ask for God's faith, then we can transform this world to be a peaceful world where advanced technology can coexist with advanced spirituality. Instead, we have globalists that are malevolently evil, have no sense of humanity, and are determined to get rid of most of us. And we need to face the music. The first step in the treatment of any illness is to face how bad it really is. The diagnosis here, and I'm Dr. Deagle, not just as a doctor of patients, but the doctor of the planet, to tell you the diagnosis is terminal. 
We are dying of lack of faith. Faith comes when you pray to God in love that he will give you the faith. He'll give us a pathway to get through this. But it's very evident if the government's willing to do this and blow up children, blow the alarm off a girl, kill people, including this Chinese student, injure 170, do 9-11, do Oklahoma City, put the National Defense Authorization Act and the Expropriation Act, promulgate illegal wars and spend trillions of dollars killing millions of Iraqis. And by the way, these little little girls in Syria are being blown in half and uh, little boys and girls that are being killed in Iraq. And now they're suffering depleted uranium, which is causing horrifying birth defects. This is a curse on the population. And believe me, it's going to come back. It's going to come back in America. And, and it's, and I saw Babylon the Great, mother of harlots. Of Lucifer. Right. And I saw Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and of abominations of the earth. And that nation, that nation is America. It's not Canada. It's not New Zealand. It's not the Netherlands. It's not Norway. It's America. America has a duality of the daughter of Babylon and the daughter of Zion. And Zionism is not bad when it's godly Zionism, based on the idea that God's going to resurrect his two houses of Israel and bring back the true Hebrews and their spiritual grafted-in people called Christians or followers of Yeshua HaMashiach. What, there is no competition between true Judeo-Christianity that follows the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and any other religion. Every other religion is false. Every other religion is a pathway to death and destruction of the soul. Every other religion is a way to give you hell insurance to make you feel really good about annihilation. That's what it is. So yep. what we need to do is we need to start acting as the as literally the, the inheritors of the promise, and we need to pass that promise to North Koreans, to Chinese, who, by the way, the most Christians in the world, the new Christians, are Chinese, believe it or not, both Catholic and Protestant. Than any other nation on earth, they're Chinese because they're under such horrifying persecution. If you have one page of the Bible in China, you get tissue typed and thrown in a Lao Dai prison camp. And if your organs are required, they whip your kidneys and your eyes out of your head, your heart out of your body, and they even send the cost of the bullet to the back of your head to your family while your organs and your body is literally incinerated because they don't even want to deal with the remains that are going to charge your family with the cost of disposing of your remains. So this is a horrifying regime that we have as China, most favored nation status. We, America, need to repent. We need to repent of putting and voting in leaders that are not even American like Obama. We need to repent of senators and congressmen and think it's a good idea to pass an amnesty bill when we have 300,000 people with Chagas disease. We need to repent of promulgating illegal wars and repent of forcing people to take vaccines and toxic drugs that won't receive Obamacare. We need to repent of allowing politicians to become imperial like Obama. Adolf Hitler rose because we, and that means collectively humanity, the Germans, who were gentle and nice and well-cultured people, tolerated it. We need to stop tolerating. We need to stop thinking there's a, quote, mainstream That's media. That's exactly right. Us. All this is happening because the great masses of people are allowing it to happen. Well, I want to stand in your faces not only as Dr. Deagle, but as a prophet, as a, uh, a apostolic voice in the wilderness speaking loudly to you and speaking with a desperation. And if you can hear my voice cracking, it's not just the desperation of the horror of these little children blown to bits and these people like this Chinese student and these people, you know, with shrapnel from a so-called homemade bomb made with a pressure cooker. No, what we have here is we have an evil that's malignant. This is not the end of this. This is the beginning of the end. If they're that desperate to do this, the next thing will be a nuke going off in a stadium with thousands, tens of thousands. It'll be a major disaster. It'll be an airborne plague with police and foreign troops on our our every corner. And that's where we're going with this. And presiding over us is the deconstructing Actor in chief in the White House, the usurper. If they'll kill a, a, a kindergarten classroom full of kids right before Christmas, and then right after Easter kill um, yes. innocent men, women, and children yeah. in the streets of Boston, they'll do anything. Well, they'll kill you while you're eating your Wheaties with a Hellfire missile two years from now when they have fully weaponized drones over American airspace. And if you're on a kill list, don't worry. That database up in uh, Utah that's being built is getting ready to take you out. If you think it's a conspiracy theory, turn off the radio, walk away, and get ready for your funeral.